today for our Terrain Tuesday we have something a little different. Normally we're doing uh, builds, uh, sometimes printing and building stuff, uh, but today we're kind of doing a partial review uh, slash unboxing. So what I have, as you can see here with this ton of resin, uh, is the Brotherhood of Steel base set that they released. So this contains walkways, um, the Jeep, the anti-aircraft turret, a bunch of tents, along with uh, some barricades of various types. We've got sandbags and we have more of a junk barricade but still has a Brotherhood of Steel one. Uh, and these larger pieces are nice in that the pre-supported versions come pre-hollowed, so it cuts down. Uh, everything you see here, with the exception of the tents, because uh, of how low detail I printed on my uh, Epax E10 resin, the tents, because they are lower detail, I just went ahead and printed them on my FDM printer. I'm not very well dialed into it, so I tend to only use it for larger pieces. Other people have st said they've gone ahead and done these larger pieces in uh, I mean, smaller pieces in resin as well. Uh, not resin, sorry, FDM. Uh, which, if you've got your uh, FDM dialed in, then good on you. Uh, the files are provided supported and unsupported. The supported files are supported for resin only. Uh, it's not the same support system that an FDM printer will use, so you'll have to use the unsupported files and do your own supports, which I've not really had a problem with uh, FDM printers and supports uh, as far as just the auto support function. Uh, I use Cura with uh, tree supports and uh, those are quite good. But like I said, I've, I've not dialed my resin printer and my uh, FDM printer in very well. Uh, but on to what you want to really see. So. In addition to the Brotherhood of Steel specific pieces, we also have these camping pieces. So we've got a little campfire here, wood pile, wood pile with axe stuck in the piece, a little a tiny axe that's separate, so you want to make sure to keep track of that, different type of wood pile, and then I love this piece, which is a camp stove. So the, this upright is connected to this brick, which is a separate piece and just kind of plugged into the base. This pot and the mesh that it sits upon are separate. Uh, so you, I just glued on the mesh, then glued on the pot. Uh, but I think that's a very cool little bit. Uh, we also have these generic floodlights. So anyone who's played Fallout 4 or 76, uh, knows this floodlight well. It's one of the basic lights you can get. And then we also have the non uh, floor sitting one. This one's more for tables. So that's nifty. I did have, now the pre supports are great. Uh, if anything, they over support. Uh, I did have one problem where I ripped a support off here. Uh, but, you know, then, then it just becomes a broken table for scatter. Um, it also has, as far as other camping gear goes, this uh, tiny camp stove, which I find hilarious because I actually own a camp stove that looks like that. Uh, the bed is interesting. So it has a separate mattress, so if you want, you can just throw the mattress down. Uh, but then it has the bed frame and you can just sit the mattress in it. I think that's nifty. It basically gives you a two-in-one. Then we have your generic sleeping bag has a lot of rough texture and you know like folds and stuff so that's cool uh, also have a lovely duffel bag and I'm gonna set the duffel bag aside here uh, as well as the cut these smaller pieces because I'm gonna bring these back up later uh, love this palette uh, you can just stack stuff onto the palette so print you up this. Uh, this is a little metal container. Toss it on there and go. What I would recommend is just printing a bunch of these different pieces, 
put that, and then just gluing them all together as larger scatter pieces. Um, now, for the FDM, the tents, as you can see, you've got the kind of mesh windows. Uh, obviously, the interior hollow, so it prints like this. And this one prints in a just one piece done. There's a smaller one as well that is zipped closed. So if you're printing in resin, you want to make sure that it is hollowed out. Uh, but FDM, it should do all of that itself. For the larger tents, they're multi-part. So this is actually the back, and then it just slots that one on, and then this one. Which means, technically, you could make it as long as you want, but this is pretty much as long as you'd need. I printed it open, so it's open, but they do have a closed variant for each. And there you go. Now, one thing you can do, I need to drill the holes out so they kind of clip together, but you could also just clip off the pegs, drill into the pegs, and just magnetize these so they'll snap together. Which I may also do, because I do love my magnets. So I'm just going to set those aside. Um, uh, so let's see, set the table aside. Da, da, da. Now, there are some incredibly, incredibly tiny pieces. Uh, that are included in this. So as an example, I'm going to see if I can get this to focus in here. Uh, yeah, it's not wanting to... There we go. So that's about, I think, as good as we're going to get it. This is the ever-elusive uh, uh, ammo pack. So if you've ever been hunting for ballistic fiber, especially in Fallout 76, that's where this comes from, and it is tiny, but the detail on this is very hard to see in the camera. But it has the snap, the lining, everything, so really great. And these were printed, like I said, on my EPAX E10. Uh, I have the 5K variant right now, and I printed it at .05. I also haven't really dialed in my EPAX. I could probably go lower than 0.5, but I don't normally need to. Now, it also has a desk radio, which is, it's kind of printed on one sp uh, sprue, as it were. Oh uh, dear. Oh, no, there it is. <laughs> but it's comprised of, oh, that's not this, these four pieces. So you have the radio, bass, microphone, little speaker jobby, and then this teeny tiny button. And if you've seen them in-game, they're generally all in the same configuration, but this lets you then glue these down to a table, which is what I would recommend so that you don't lose all these tiny, tiny pieces. So I'm going to set all this tiny stuff together. Then we have the standard Fallout radio that you find, and it has some very nice details on the front. Um, you have that you can actually see if the, if, you know, the camera would pick it up, but it's so tiny. It actually has the uh, little like window where you see the stations, the knobs, everything are, is all worked into that. And even the back has a little grills for because these were vacuum tubes that dissipate a lot of heat. Now that's all the super tiny stuff, and I guess I'll add the axe to it as well. So another thing this is great for, uh, and something some people might not think of off the top of your head, these are great basing materials. So you can print a bunch of extras of these, and if you have some bare bases, because some of the Fallout bases are nicely detailed, but some of them are lacking, you can just print these up and stick them on the base and really customize those. So I think that's a nice option that this kind of provides that maybe some haven't thought about yet. Um, let's move on to the barricades. So. Uh, I did get some questions, uh, or I, I didn't get questions, I saw some questions online about uh, comparing the standard barricades that you can buy from Modiphius, that's what this is, in their nice uh, cast resin, and the printable ones as far as size and everything. So, the base is a little different, but the actual size of the barricade is spot on. These are all printed at 
on the EPRAX. So, uh, while you may want to print some of these larger pieces smaller, do not print anything that has the uh, concrete style barrier smaller than 100 if you own the other ones, because then they'll look really weird. So the nice thing is, obviously, you have the Brotherhood of Steel logo prominent and raised. So that's going to be really easy to paint and look really good. Otherwise, it's identical to the one that you can buy. So I thought that was really nice. Now, I have incorporated these barricades into a couple of the larger pieces. So we have some junk walls and the Brotherhood of Steel barricade there. And then we have a sandbag, bar sandbag barricade in between these two. And the really nice thing is there is actually a lot of detail on these barricades themselves, which is why I chose to print them in resin. So you might not be able to see it because, again, I don't have these primes, so I've not picked out the detail. But there's a mine that's placed right here. Uh, on the back side, a little easier to see. We've got several ammo cases. Uh, so this is all very nice. We have a wooden barricade, which will serve uh, for anyone. Um, so that's very nice. Uh, it's pretty spiky too, so just be careful. <laughs> Uh, we have a pure sandbag barricade, once again, more generic. For detail pieces on this, we have the ammunition and a medic, uh, like a first aid kit, which has the standard fallout raised uh, detail work on that, so that is super nice. Like I said, just another nice piece of detail. And detail work on this, obviously the Brotherhood of Steel logos, um, and all the other pieces. Not as much on here, so you could probably get away with this one in FDM. Uh, and then the sandbag one has a first aid kit with all of the detail on that. So, again, it comes down to what printer you have access to and how well tuned you have it. For me, I just prefer to do these in resin and be done. Another part of the included set is dead bodies. So, this is a military you know, helmet and whatnot. And he's bent over, so these are great for being slumped against walls, uh, slumped on the barricades, just great. And then we also have this one, which is just a dead body on a bit of terrain, so you can toss that down. And then this one is several crates with an ammo container and a dead body leaning against it. So I thought those were really nice. that It goes with the Brotherhood of Steel taking over like ex-military locations. Now this isn't a barricade, but it could be used as such, is the Jeep. has another dead body on it, nice detail work. Um, there's like an axle embedded here, first aid kit, wheel rim, you know, all the another mines right there. Ammo crate partially embedded, second mine. So again, there is some nice detail on here. Uh, now, some of the parts that people really want to see. We have, this should be familiar from anyone from Fallout 76, which I don't believe these have shown up anywhere else uh, but 76, but these are the anti-aircraft missile launchers you can use to engage Scorch Beasts. Has nice raised Brotherhood of Steel logo on the side. Um, the pipes are actually separately printed and then glued on. In fact, this one piece is the center, two side mounts, the two missile mounts, and then you have kind of your standard base, uh, which I haven't glued because then you can actually pivot it. And then I didn't print this, but there's a dirt uh, platform that it can mount on. And then we have this, which is part of the rampart system here. And it's designed to fit that. And then you can take the other ones and kind of link them together almost. Um, so moving on to the ramparts. They're all built kind of the same. You have a top piece, front piece. And this is cloudy because I've sanded it down. If you're sanding these, always wear a um, face mask. Uh, you do not want to be inhaling this or getting it in your eyes. Wear goggles as well. But so you have this front barricade piece, the back stanchions, and the base. So that's really all they are. Uh, and then they, you have multiples of these. Uh, you have the ladder version. So we've got this straight. 
with the ladder. One thing that they didn't provide is any purely straight pieces like this. So in theory, actually, what you could do is just cut this in half, and you could either do this after you print or just do it in mesh mixer, but cut down this piece, and then you don't have to put the staircase, and then they can join up together. In addition, I haven't assembled these because I wanted to show the pieces. You have curved sections. So as an example of how these assemble, this would go here. This actually mounts on top. And then you have two poles. All of the poles are standard that would go in and just hold that up. So that's pretty easy to put together. Uh, and then this goes onto this piece, uh, which just be a stairs to put up if you didn't have this. Uh, honestly, what I think they should have done, like I said, is not made this piece and left the stairs to be this modular bit and just provided this straight. So that that's a little, I don't know who made that call, but I'd be interested in hearing their justification on it. Now, these uh, handles, the, the railing systems are very, very fragile. Uh, and they are overly supported, if anything. And so for instance, this one, I broke it in several places. Uh, there, there. So I can just glue that back together, uh, and then after I paint, uh, prime and paint it, it'll be fine. But definitely something to watch out for. You may want to not use the supported versions of these, or just even reduce your uh, settings so that it doesn't cure as much. But that's all of those parts. Now, as I said, there is a couple more tents that I didn't print for the purpose of showing off. Because quite frankly, where would have I would I have put it to show off? Oh, um, and the last piece, almost totally forgot, is the Jeep. The Jeep is a multi-part piece. Uh, the three seats are separate, the steering wheel, the windshield, all five wheels, the body, and then underneath was interesting, you actually have the undercarriage system. So the leaf springs here with the wheel attachments and the axle are one piece. This uh, transmission box is part of the main body print, and then this leaf spring and axle set is also separate. So it goes together pretty easily. It's a nicely detailed uh, and gives you another vehicle. So there was a pretty hefty price tag associated with the Brotherhood of Steel pack. It's uh, 50 bucks, I think. But honestly, considering everything you get in that pack, uh, I actually think it's it's worth the cost. Um, I found other Jeep files for free online, and I had printed it. I just don't know where it went. I may have tossed it because honestly, it was a terrible print job. Um, this one is so much more detailed. There's uh, work here on the dashboard, on the floor. Uh, the underside is where all of the supports are which is a good way of printing. If you're printing anything, always look at where your supports are going and put them in the least used area. So this has been sanded a bit, um, but again, I'm not being super careful on it because you're not gonna see it. But so that's super awesome as well. Now, the important thing of course is how do these look next to miniatures so that you can get a good sizing. So this is my gunner with missile launcher. We can stand him up here and as you can see at a hundred percent these walkways are designed to fit a standard base perfectly. Uh, so again I wouldn't really print them under that. Now they don't accept the larger base uh, so if you want to build, say, a super mutant fort, you may want to up that. I'd say only 5% is needed, uh, and then they'd be able to fit quite nicely. As far as the stairs go, at 100%, you can actually kind of, you know, it'll sit there fine, but you can get the under the lip of the next stair, and it just looks great. So again, would not print the these pieces under 100%, because I just don't think 
you'd be able to use them then. Uh, if you go down even as much as 95, I think a lot of people are doing 90, you'll never fit the miniature on there. Um, next to the Jeep, looks great. The Jeep you might be able to scale down because I, now I don't have any real world experience with Jeeps, <laughs> but the fact that your so let's drop, if you drop the base down to where the tires are, your neck is coming up to the Jeep's hood there. That seems a little big. So definitely I think the Jeep could be scaled down 90%. Um, and in that case, you could also scale down this the Jeep wreck down as well. But since it's a wreck, not as needed. Uh, the missiles side by side. This is a large piece in 76 and I'd say that's accurate based on the jumping around of them that I've done. <laughs> um, and the barricades uh, I think look really good and you can get your miniature right up on there and yeah I think they're sized perfectly well. Uh, the dead body here is sized to the same specifications as your regular miniatures. So again, I don't think printing them less than 100 is needed. Uh, and obviously for all the small parts, do not try printing them less than 100. Uh, you would lose components when trying to remove them from the sprue so much more. Uh, but again, I can take this microphone and if I needed to make a base look better, just sit it there. Um, definitely our, nope, that's not the one, our teeny tiny ballistic bag can be put on there. So I think these are great for dressing up your bases with. Uh, and yeah, so all kinds of stuff, and especially when you move up to the larger bases, uh, you know, you're looking at the duffel bag will look great on there if it's a very plain one once you glue it on. Otherwise, it just wants to roll like that one did. But yeah, so I am actually really super pleased with the set. So I'll have the link to both the stores in the description. Uh, eventually, I'll get some paint on these. I swear I do sometimes paint my 3D printed stuff, uh, especially if I plan on taking them out. Um, and one thing, I should have worn gloves while I was doing this. Uh, these have been cleaned. You may notice that the, some of them are a little shiny. So, the while they are cleaned, if your cleaning solution, whatever you choose to clean in, uh, obviously, when these come out, they're coated in liquid resin. I put them in IPA, the resin comes off, it doesn't disappear. It's still particles of liquid resin remain in your cleaning solution. So, if, in, as in my case, you've done a lot of printing and you haven't cleaned your IPA, you get this shiny look and it just there's it's not that there's resin left on it it just kind of has a little film uh, of residue and you can't really clean that off you could probably go in with pure IPA spray it and, and maybe look good but it also won't be I've not had an issue with primer flaking because of this. It, it, it's nothing to really worry about, but it is a good indicator. Time to clean your IPA. <laughs> um, let me know if anyone's interested in more details on how you actually do certain 3D printing things like uh, cleaning your IPA and, and stuff like that. Uh, I have covered the basics of 3D printing in some of my earlier videos. Uh, so you can go back and watch those and pick up things like, you know, the best way of, of curing and, and cleaning your miniatures and stuff like that. And, or I won't say the best way, that's the way I do things. Um, and I've been actively resin printing for solidly for a year now on the EPAX. And I did some experiments with prior machines. I've had experience with uh, Elegoo Mars and then a really cheap one before that. So, and then my CR10 Max for my FDM, I've been printing on that since pre-COVID. Oh, wow. That's scary to think. Almost three years now. 
Uh, but anyway, so let me know in the comments if you guys want to, you know, anything else you want to know about 3D printing and, and any other information like that. And we will be back on Friday with another Fallout video.